Research for me is, is about asking questions. It's about finding answers to questions about things. It might be the process of what you're doing. It might be the product of what you're doing. I think that research can be um, absolutely anything um, that's relevant to the work that you do and the ideas that you have. But what's important about research and what makes research different from other kinds of practices that we might engage with is that it's um, in some way um, disciplined Research is really important, I think, because it can lead you to better outcomes than you would otherwise get. You can test things. You can see what might happen. You could test two different products, two different colours, two different surfaces, materials or whatever. And you can also, of course, find out what other people have done in the past to see what worked, what didn't work. Any idea you have will actually have a history, whether you know it or not. And I think that it's always important to look at the history of those ideas, to understand why it is that you actually found that little trace of something that's led you to conceive a particular project. And I also think research is about connecting to um, the world of knowledge and world of experience. So it's also about acknowledging that everything that we do contributes to an existing universe of things and that um, the contributions we make to knowledge and to experience are important and relevant and always have these relationships to other things in the world. It, it builds layers onto your artwork that, that give meaning to whoever else is viewing it. Um, you know, you can do an artwork with absolutely no research and it might mean something to you, but everyone, no one else is going to feel the depth unless you've got the, the the history and the context behind it. The intuition is important for an artist, or passion is important, but something more profound or more meaningful, or something, you know, give probably the artist and, all, all, and also the viewers different perspective. Just beyond doing a certain project, um, research into um, various topics gives you a greater understanding of where the design world um, is in terms of what trends there are, um, what design is currently serving in terms of society. To my mind, Research starts with that burning desire to know something, okay? You can't fake it. Doing research because you should do research is never going to work. I think often um, students have the idea that research means um, this very classic old school thing of um, sitting somewhere silently and alone um, at a desk, kind of reading through, you know, classic scholarly text by important dead men. <laughs> And sometimes that's the case, but that's um, certainly not the limits of research. I think in terms of design, it's important not to separate out research from practice. And I think maybe sometimes people may be reluctant to either uh, begin the design process or the research process because they see them as phases that they need to go through. In an art school, research is all about making. It's about learning through practice, so learning through making, learning through touching the materials or using the software. So in an art school, you don't learn about how to make art, you learn how to make art. They do their artwork and they go to the library and they sort of put a theory and a practice together uh, for a particular purpose. So we have this a framework there, we have theoretical framework to support our artwork, to understand, to explain. And at the same time, we use our practice to not demonstrate what we learn from theory, but to help the theory, you know, to, the, the two things actually grow together. Research for me is in order to progress the practice past some, some almost like a blockage, if you like, or a need for extra research. And that research has a hypothesis and it has something to solve. It asks questions and those questions must be answered. Researching for an essay or an assignment um, a lot of times can be very limited. You have, uh, you're given an artist to go research or a movement or a piece to go and, and research. When you're researching for studio work, it doesn't end there. It, that's just the beginning. You don't have to just look at the arts resources. You may be inspired by science. You may be inspired by nature. And the library doesn't just provide access, or what well, we do provide access, but not just to uh, books and scholarly research. We have an amazing array of image databases and video content that's available online and sound content. So don't just think of it as the text but also everything else as well. There's a lot of scholarly information and some great information that's behind password protected servers and firewalls. By using the library systems, you can get access into these. And often they have information that you just can't get 
anywhere else? I think that the first step of research um, today with, the, you know, the internet as being kind of um, often the first port of call for research is fine. Really useful in giving a sense of what exists and what exists in relation to each other. Because on the internet you have this great sense of one thing networked with another thing. If I'm going to research, I'm going to go on the internet and I do almost all my research on the internet, but then I stop and I actually end up doing more research away from it. So the internet's a great place to start. It doesn't really matter what the entry point is as long as from the entry point you're able to move to other points. The more you research into where the source of the information you found came from, the more things you can find. Research is quite different than just ser searching the web. Uh, often when we get locked into uh, you know, YouTube cycles or uh, floating through the internet, we don't really have a very uh, strong purpose in, mi in mind. And when we're doing research, what we're doing is we have a purpose in mind. So we have a question that we're investigating or a concept that we're trying to come to terms with. The idea that we kind of consume a piece of research entirely, put it down and move on to the next one is, is false. You know, we've always got a hundred fingers in a hundred different pies and we're moving in a non-linear way between them, often quite frenzied. And I think that's fantastic. That's the exciting thing of research. Don't just restrain yourself to one source. You need to, um, like, don't just use books, don't just use journals. Um, go out to a gallery, go out to a... Um, a performance, a, a light show. It's important for students to use a diversity of resources when they're doing their research because even academics uh, writing scholarly research um, come in with their own opinions on, on particular subjects. And if you're only reading from one particular voice, you're only going to hear that one opinion. So going out and finding all different voices can really make your, your work and your product of much richer in the end. What we're looking for at the university context is for students to actually critically engage with the information, um, to evaluate what they're reading. I think the thing that's really important to do is to um, read or engage, watch, listen, observe very intensely. That's where the kind of critical thinking or the analytical thinking comes into play. I think uh, one big way students can improve their research skills is to understand that research is not a linear process. It's, it's almost like the design process itself. It's a, it's a series of trial and error. You do a search, it doesn't work, you try a different one, you learn some new technique, you try a different tool, so you come in, go in and come out and try different things. It isn't like trying to just find you know, the capital of a country. But also ask for help. We are here. Ask not just the library, but your, your, your fellow students and your lecturer. You don't have to read everything on the topic, but you can ask people for help and actually work within um, your creative collaborative circles to so, you know, make those inquiries, challenge each other, and sort of start to branch out in terms of your critical and creative inquiries. Probably the biggest obstacle I see with students when they're just starting in research is to know what kinds of tools to use. There are so many tools, I mean just outside of the internet, all the tools that we have here in the library. Some of the support services that the library has includes uh, online tutorials like Elise and Elise can help students uh, locate, use and analyze academic resources. And we also have subject guides which are lists of resources selected, the library works with the academics to select the best possible resources and students can go in, find their subject and look at those resources and narrow it down just to those particular ones. That's a great way to get started. The biggest obstacle to research is um, fear, I think, fear that um, there's right ways and wrong ways to do it, feeling that there is nothing new to say. Um, and of course there's always new things to say, but it means actually sitting down and thinking about what new things you want to contribute as a researcher, rather than what things you can patch together from, from you know, existing resources.